Want to learn some amazing textured paintings? Watch this video. Hello everyone and welcome to Make With Ajay. I'm Ajay and in today's episode I'm gonna make yet another beautiful textured painting. In the beginning of this year I decided that I'll be focusing on creating some more beautiful textures, we'll explore more techniques and more materials in order to do that and that's what I'm gonna do. So in this video I have planned yet another grey painting with some beautiful shiny textures and instead of using a normal stencil, I'm going to be making a freehand design. I have something really beautiful in mind. All the materials are almost similar to what I used in my last video. The tools are exactly the same, but the technique is still very different. So stay tuned to learn more of these textured paintings. And yes, before we proceed further, it's a kind request to please subscribe to this channel and press the bell notification icon so that you may get notified about more such future videos. I post videos every week. It's free. <laughs> so without further ado, let's make our painting and let's get started. So to begin with, as usually, I took a wooden board and I taped that wooden board from all four corners to have a sharp border. And then I used my clear gesso to provide some texture on the board and I applied it thoroughly all over the board. This is a really important step as it allows any paint or any other material that you're using on the board to stick to it properly. Gesso provides a textured bond between the surface and the paint. So I wanted this painting to be grey in colour and my plaster was white in colour already so I mixed a bit of black colour to my plaster and it turned this beautiful grey colour. I especially loved how the plaster was so shiny and it looked amazing when it was wet. <laughs> Next, I carefully spread the entire plaster all over the board, keeping it as even as possible. This would be the base layer for any other design. And I used my all-time favourite, this cute little yellow spatula to do that. Now I'll be using this metal spatula along with this piece of sponge to create some texture on the board. So I started dabbing the plaster all over the board using the sponge first. And when the plaster was still wet, I took my metal spatula and spread that plaster in all the direction, creating these plain island-like textures all over the board. I absolutely loved how this plaster was shining so good. Look at this reflection of light when I tilt the board. It's so beautiful. And then when the plaster dried, it was time to burnish the plaster by rubbing it my metal spatula. But I hated this process as it was making a really loud screeching noise. But it was necessary to burnish the plaster. So I decided to use this amethyst burnisher that I already had with me. What this is, is actually the amethyst stone on a stick that you can rub on different surfaces to burnish them and make them shine even more. And I meticulously used this burnisher and rubbed it all over the board to make it shine even brighter. And this burnishing with amethyst stone worked to my advantage as uh, when I was done burnishing the entire sheet, it was really shiny, just like a sheet of polished marble. It looked so beautiful. 
After that, I took a white pencil and started drawing a freehand design of a banana leaf plant. I really love banana leaf plants for their big and beautiful leaves and I thought that it would be aesthetically very pleasing if I make that banana leaf plant with white color on this gray background. After the sketch was ready, I filled a squeezy bottle with plaster and took some flat brushes to make my design. So the technique here is to apply some plaster using the squeezy bottle on the sketch and then try spreading that plaster as evenly as possible in the direction where you want to create a faded shade. I used this tiny flat brush to spread the plaster in the area where I wanted to shade and then I wet the brush a little bit and spread the plaster a bit more. It's a really simple yet very effective technique, especially when you use the right colors. You might also want to keep a glass of water and a piece of rag or any cloth beside you to wet the brush and dry it as needed. And here is a better process of me using the same technique all over the sketch. I hope you enjoyed this. I literally enjoyed this technique a lot. I'll definitely be using this technique a lot more in future. I especially loved how this technique was providing this really bright and thick outline that was fading into the picture as you spread it. This is a really beautiful effect I must say. And since you're using a squeezy bottle to draw these lines, these lines will be thick enough to provide that three-dimensional texture to the painting. I really love touching all the textures and feeling the painting with my fingers. It feels so good. After the shading was all done, I used the squeezy bottle to draw some thick lines in between the leaves. And then it was time to bring in some more shine, for which I used this black and clear wax in combination with each other and I spread it in all the area outside our sketch. I love this product so much cause it not only brings the shine to your painting but also increases the durability. It provides that protective finish and a layer over your painting. When the wax dried it was time to buff it to make it really shiny so I used my buffing cloth and I rubbed it all over the area where I had applied wax and it was shining like a polished marble this effect is my favorite seriously 
It's always so much fun to watch that matte surface turning into a really shiny surface. The before and after effects are amazing. And after all the last minute touch up and buffing, the last step was to remove that tape to reveal that crisp border. And here's the final reveal. <laughs> I absolutely love how this painting turned out. Look at that shine. <laughs> wow, it's so shiny and so beautiful. And I totally love the combination of grey and white colour. So beautiful. I absolutely love how these textures are shining under the light. And here's another close-up look at all of those textures. I also love these three-dimensional lines that I drew with the squeezy bottle. Imagine a wall of these textures and when you rub your finger all over that wall, God, that's gonna feel so good. And here are some more shots of that painting in some warm yellow light. I hope you like it. So that was it for today guys. Wow, that painting turned out so good. And I totally love those shiny textures and those plain shiny surfaces. It was rough, but then it was still very plain and shiny. <laughs> well, stay with me as I'll be exploring more such techniques in future and I'll be exploring more ways to make such beautiful textured paintings. And to learn more about that, please do subscribe to my channel and press the bell notification icon so that you may get notified about more such future videos. Please comment down below and let me know what do you want to see in future. I hope that you like watching this video as much as I enjoyed making this painting. And with this, as I always say, we are gonna make this world beautiful one thing at a time. I'll see you later. Bye!